With the ongoing quest for sustainability, it seems like EVs have been taken for granted. Most car makers accepted this technology as the only one with the potential to replace internal combustion units, but that's far from true. Toyota, for example, insists on a diverse approach, which would include the implementation of all kinds of technologies which would significantly reduce carbon emissions. It all started with hybrids, but soon after, the Japanese company started working on a variety of power sources, including hydrogen, ammonia, etc. But what about other companies? What about that small startup from Spain that brings revolutionary engine design with potential for numerous applications? Let's check that one first. VN Engine, a small startup from Spain, has always been insisting on an electric approach to future mobility. Therefore, it isn't a surprise that at times when everyone is working on new battery technology, this company decided to reinvent the internal combustion technology. The new engine has been in the testing phase for a while, and it looks like we could see the first application pretty soon. So what's the deal with this new engine? The company calls it a one-stroke engine, which clearly suggests that something atypical is going on. If you're familiar with the basics of engine design, you know that modern cars feature four-stroke engines. There's also a two-stroke engine design which is used in certain motorcycles, for example. The thing with this engine design is that it works as an opposed piston with a wavy twist. So even though we call it one stroke, it is essentially a two stroke engine because there are still two movements in the combustion process. What's different compared to a typical two stroke engine is that it doesn't burn oil, which has always been the biggest downside of two stroke engines. Not only that it doesn't burn oil, it doesn't even use a stroke to lubricate itself because combustion and lubrication are separated, just like in a four-stroke engine. And if you look at a four-stroke engine, there are so many things going on. Intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. There are the four strokes that all happen separately. Meanwhile, a two-stroke engine keeps things simple with just compression and combustion, while intake and exhaust are happening simultaneously. So what the new single-stroke engine does is taking the best of both worlds. With the way it works, it has thermal efficiency that's on par with the two-stroke engine, which is superior compared to four-stroke engines, which are, on the other hand, way more refined. Not to mention that two-stroke engines with their oil combustion are dirty and significantly less convenient to use. The new engine removes these downsides of a two-stroke engine but retains those good characteristics. With an opposed piston setup, the new engine actually counts up to eight because there are four of them on each side. They all share the combustion chamber with fixed rods behind them, and the thing with these rods is that they have a wave-like oscillating design. The rods are the ones that press and release pistons in a coordinated movement. Meanwhile, intake and exhaust are happening simultaneously. The exhaust port is located ahead of the intake port, which creates a vacuum as the piston moves past the intake port, which allows fresh air to get in for the next cycle. With opposed pistons, this engine solves one of the biggest issues with traditional two-stroke engines. It reduces noise and vibration significantly, ensuring smooth and refined operation. At the same time, such a piston layout keeps the engine pretty small, which opens up a whole new spectrum of possibilities when it comes to future applications. The engine design looks promising in theory, but what about the practical use? Where are its limits? So far, the company has been testing it on an old Mazda MX-5 Miata, where the new 500cc has replaced a conventional 1.8-liter four-stroke engine. The new unit puts out 126 horsepower and it's pretty much on par with the standard engine, while its specific design allows for all-wheel drive application. However, we noticed one intriguing thing. The company didn't specify max torque. It didn't answer that question either. Meanwhile, we noticed that the test mule was also equipped with some kind of forced ignition, which indicates that the new engine needs a boost to achieve the desired torque. In other words, the bare engine is probably not too generous with torque, and that raises a couple of questions. The first, of course, is whether the new engine design is appropriate for automotive applications. That's one of the answers we're looking for, but even if there's not enough torque to spin wheels conveniently, the engine might find its way to the automotive world anyway, because it could be used as a pretty efficient power generator in hybrid vehicles. 
Companies like Nissan already came up with such systems where a gasoline engine feeds the battery and electric motors, with the latter spinning the wheels. In the case of the new engine, things could be particularly beneficial, considering that the new engine is compact and therefore light. When used instead of large batteries, it can easily save hundreds of pounds in weight and make the ride safer, easier, and more convenient, not to mention significantly reduce carbon footprint. And despite questionable capabilities, the new engine shows a lot of potential for applications in other sectors, particularly in marine and off-grid power generation. Now let's get back to Toyota's vision of an eclectic future. You probably know that the company's ex-CEO and the current chairman, Akio Toyoda, doesn't believe in the all-electric future. He insists on a multifaceted approach to the quest for zero emissions and sustainability. Moreover, he stated on several occasions that he doesn't believe that EVs will ever account for more than a third of the new car market. In a world where billions of people still don't have access to electricity, this makes perfect sense. For that reason, Toyota never pushed EVs too hard. While companies like Ford and GM are currently licking their wounds from the failed try of a quick and smooth EV transition, the Japanese giant is persistent in doing things its own way. When it comes to electrification, this means taking smaller baby steps. Of course, we are talking about hybrids, a technology that Toyota has been perfecting for 25 years. Now it looks more likely than ever that this technology will be the main source of mobility for the generations to come. But Toyota doesn't just enjoy this told-you-so moment and make huge profits while rival companies are losing billions. Toyota also invests in new possibilities for a sustainable future, which leads us to alternative sources of automotive energy, which leads us to new ways of internal combustion. Toyota isn't the only company that thinks hydrogen might be one of the fuels of the future, but it's probably the only one that is seriously developing such engines at the moment. Toyota first tried with electric motors and hydrogen fuel cells, but that technology turned out to be less practical compared to standard battery electric vehicles. Now it's the turn of another way of using hydrogen. It's time to burn it. Indeed, the new technology is all about internal combustion, with the key difference that, instead of gasoline or diesel, the engine burns hydrogen. The key benefit, of course, is the fact that such engines don't emit carbon gases through the pipe. And with all the mining concerns associated with battery electric cars in mind, it doesn't come as a surprise that many experts claim this is the only true zero-emission solution. In any case, Toyota has been pretty busy lately working on a few engines that run on hydrogen. The hydrogen fuel cell Mirai didn't become a commercial success, but it still paid off in the way that Toyota now has a proper technology for storing hydrogen in car tanks, which is certainly one of the most challenging parts of this hydrogen adventure. As for the engines, Toyota already has a couple of units that are in the testing phase. The best known is the converted 1.6-liter turbocharged three-cylinder engine that originally ran on gasoline and can be found in Yaris and Corolla GR models. This engine is in a pretty advanced stage of development, so it doesn't surprise that one of the prototypes already participates in various racing competitions, such as the Fuji 24 Hours Race, Super Taikyu Series Endurance Race, etc. A capable V8 engine is also in the works, and once again, it's about the conversion of standard gasoline-powered engines. This time, it's a 5-liter V8, the one which powers models like LC500 and RCF, which is expected to feature a max output of 444 horsepower. Finally, the company is also testing one of the hydrogen-powered V6 engines in a commercial van on the roads of Australia. As mentioned, Akio Toyoda doesn't believe in an all-electric future. But does this mean he's against EVs? Not at all. According to Toyota, EVs have their place in the future, and what he fights against is the current trend of imposing EVs as the only solution. There are many roads that lead to reduced carbon emissions and sustainable mobility, and it's up to customers to decide which one they're going to take. In Toyota's book, it's all about giving consumers as many options as possible, and that's why we're not surprised that the Japanese giant presented another piece of new technology last October. Namely, Toyota teamed up with the Chinese state-owned company Guangzhou Automobile Group, better known as GAC, and developed a new ICE unit that runs on, guess what, ammonia. 
The two companies already introduced a 2-liter engine that puts a little bit over 160 horsepower and doesn't use any kind of forced ignition. In other words, it is simple, so it should be as reliable and durable as any other Toyota product. But the best thing of all is that it emits 90% less carbon than a comparable gas-powered engine. Practically, this also means less carbon footprint during a lifespan than any EV you can buy today, which indicates this could be one of those aforementioned roads to sustainability. And with more and more people realizing that full electrification is not possible, things can only speed up the whole process and we could see some of these new technologies in mass production very soon. What do you think about all these new technologies? Do you agree with Toyota that there are many ways to zero emissions, or would you rather insist on EVs? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.